Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, lecture series. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so that you'll be notified when we'll be uploading videos like this. Now this is the fourth video in this uh, series of basic research and uh, in this video we'll be talking about ethics in research. Now ethics in research is a very important uh, aspect of research because uh, this is primarily the step of the research process in which we check the effects of our research endeavors to the environment, to every human person, to their whether or not they, these uh, particular researchers have actually an impact to their humanity as a whole. And so that's the reason why you have to talk about ethics with respect to research. Now, <clears throat> Ethics in research uh, provides guidelines for uh, responsible conduct of research. In addition, it educates and monitors scientists conducting research to ensure high ethical standard. Because there are situations in the past where scientists are experimenting human persons, just like a mice in a laboratory, or at some point are conducting clinical trials of which the uh, respondents, the recipients of clinical trials, were not uh, discussed thoroughly, exactly, and transparently uh, with respect to the different side effects that will arise out of a clinical trial. And so that's the reason why exactly and precisely we have to look into ethics as part of uh, the research itself. Now remember that uh, even in countries worldwide have adopted what they call as a data privacy act of which each uh, researcher should conform to because there are situations wherein people uh, i mean researcher will collect information and data that are sort of a confidential in nature and that they are not allowed to uh, release these data and information to the public without prior consent from the respondents themselves and so that's it uh, and we'll be talking about the different aspects of uh, research ethics in this particular video now <clears throat> if you want to uh, go deeper into the discussion of uh, research in ethics you can scan on the qr code that is displayed in your screen and you will be redirected to the website where we got this specific information that we are sharing you in this video now first we have honesty research should strive honesty in all academic communications honestly report data results methods and procedures and publication status do not fabricate falsify or misrepresent data do not deceive colleagues research sponsors or the public Meaning, if you are doing some kind of a research, you should be honest with all of the data results and how you gathered those data and information. Otherwise, you are being dishonest with your research. The next thing that we have to take into consideration is objectivity, which means that we have to strive to avoid bias in experimental design, data analysis, data interpretation, peer review, uh, personal decisions, grant writing, expert testimonies, and other aspects of research, meaning that we have to be objective. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, a particular company is sponsoring a research. We have to tweak the result in such a way that it will favor the uh, sponsor. No, that should not be the case. Uh, objectivity is an important aspect of uh, research ethics because uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, somebody is uh, of a great interest regarding the research topic that you're conducting and so you will have uh, to favor and uh, doctor the data in favor of such a particular entity or individual person no that should not be the case um, that is blatant dishonesty and uh, bias to the, to the uh, specific individual persons, institutions, or especially your own personal interest. 
like you want to prove something and even if you're wrong you have to tweak data in order for you to uh, tell everyone that yeah i'm i'm correct even though you're not then we have integrity keep your promises and agreements act with sincerity and strive for consistency of thought and action you have to you have to uh, practice with high integrity you have to be sincere and strive for consistency and then we have carefulness avoid careless errors and negligence carefully and critically examine your own work and work of your peers keep good records of the research activities such as data collection research design and correspondence with agencies or <clears throat> journals so you have to be careful with all of the research especially with respect to clinical research which involves human person and health and safety of the society in general there's even an issue with uh, what happened to COVID-19 during the uh, 2020 uh, 2019 pandemic which according to stories there have been sort of a um, <clears throat> leak in a laboratory in Wuhan China that uh, lead to the outbreak of the pandemic in 2020 and 2021 and so we do not know exactly whether or not that is true or that is false but the idea there is that you have to be careful because at the end of the day when you are not uh, being careful with all of the <clears throat> information or probably at some point in this case the dangerous uh, biohazard that you are performing the research with might uh, cause havoc in the world and just like that we are in a pandemic all right so <clears throat> next is openness you share data results ideas tools resources be open to criticism and new ideas then we have transparency you have to disclose methods materials assumptions analysis and other information needed to evaluate your research then we have accountability take responsibility for your part in research and be prepared to give an account of uh, what you did on a research projects and why you should be accountable in anything, anything that you do with your research project and so you have to be truthful in uh, disclosing all of the necessary information and at some point justify and explain all of the processes and methods you adapt in your research and of course this is very important we have intellectual property honor patents copyrights and other forms of intellectual property which means that when you quote or borrow words from someone you have to cite it well and you don't have uh, and you don't copy these copyrighted materials patents and all of those intellectual properties that are available in the academic world and so uh, do not use unpublished data methods or results without permissions give proper acknowledgement or credit to all contributors to research and never plagiarize plagiarism is a mortal sin in the context of research you don't copy other people's thought and other people's knowledge and you have to give credit to everyone who deserves due credit next we have confidentiality uh, confidentiality you have to protect communications such as papers or grants submitted for publication personal records trade or military secrets and patent or, or patient records when you're dealing with um, clinical trials and clinical studies you have to take into consideration that your patients uh, requires confidentiality and there are communications that are not meant for public consumption and that has to be at some point uh, protected with utmost confidentiality so when your uh, research takes confidential information you have to make sure that nobody knows those information and confidential con uh, communication without permission of those people involved then we have responsible publication publish your uh, research in order to advance knowledge and scholarship to advance your not just your own career avoid wasteful and duplicative publication 
Next, we have responsible mentoring. Help educate, mentor, advise students, promote welfare, and allow them to make their own decisions. Respect for colleagues. You have to respect your fellow researchers. Be socially responsible. You have to strive to promote social good and prevent or mitigate social harms through research, public education, and advocacy. You will not just do research for the sake of having research or for the sake of having to publish some kind of an article that has no public uh, sort of uh, importance or that has not um, advanced any form of knowledge just for the sake of publishing a research or conducting one. No, we conduct research because of uh, prevention or mitigation of social harms through research and, and uh, increase the instances of uh, a more uh, knowledgeable society or probably advance a certain kind of advocacy. And of course, uh, avoid discrimination against colleagues or students on the basis of race, sex, ethnicity, and other factors that are related to scientific competence and integrity. Next, we have competence. Maintain and improve your own professional competence and expertise through lifelong education and learning. Take steps to promote competence in science as a whole. And then follow the laws that are applicable in every situation. Let's say, for example, there are data privacy laws to have to take into consideration when dealing with confidential information and confidential data. You have to make sure that you respect the legal mandate in each of the territorial jurisdiction upon which you're conducting your research. Know and obey relevant laws and institutional and governmental policies. Animal care. Show proper respect for or care for animals when using them in research. Do not conduct unnecessary or poorly designed animal experiments. Human subjection protections. When conducting research on human subject, minimize harm and risk and maximize benefits. Respect human dignity, privacy, autonomy. Take special precautions with vulnerable populations. And strive to distribute and uh, the benefits and burdens to the research or, or of the research fairly. Now, this is the wheel of research. Of course, you have to start at some point with observation or a literature review. So when you start to have a research or some kind of an inquiry of academic uh, knowledge or of something that is related to knowledge propagation through research, you have to start with a search in observation. What have you observed in a society where you want to conduct a specific research? Or you have to uh, have what we call as a lit uh, literature review wherein you have to seek for available knowledge information that is uh, in the in the internet or any published uh, journals that would um, give an idea on what are the problems that are available and you have to clarify each of these problems that you want to take into a researcher journey with and so after uh, clarification of your problem statement you have to have assumptions and hypotheses you have to guess what will be a, a a desired outcome or the results of of your research you have to predict what will happen and then you have to uh, determine different concepts concepts and constructs and models that are necessarily to be designed or applied in a particular research then you have to design a specific research. What kind of research are you going to conduct? Is it a survey method? It is, a, is it a experimental method? It depends on the design of your research. And then you have to conduct what they call as a data collection. You have to collect data. And then you have to analyze data. Then you have to interpret and provide conclusions that would improve the, the theory or uh, solve the problem in a specific context. And then go, the, the, the story goes on and on. It, it doesn't stop because learning and the knowledge should not stop. You have to go on forward on a 
specific cycle and this is why it's called the wheel of uh, research then we have the researcher and the respondents now there is a certain relationship between the researchers and the respondent that has to that has to be taken into consideration number one is you have to evaluate ethical issues right from the beginning of the research project at the problem formulation stage you have to determine any kind of uh, a uh, sort of uh, ethics problem that uh, might occur within the conduct of the research as early as uh, the formulation of the problem uh, if you suspect problems uh, discuss these with your super supervisor fellow researchers and potential participants next is you have to provide participants or the respondents with a complete picture of your research its purpose objective and the type of information and access needed you have to educate and ask for uh, informed consent for your uh, target uh, respondents and then you had to uh, assure participants of anonymity and confidentiality if required and that they will not suffer any harm you have to use appropriate and simple language when interacting with participants they might not be aware of the terminology or detail of the research topic and they might be reluctant to ask facilitate understanding and answering of questions you do not just give the survey questionnaires and then let your respondents respond without them understanding each of the item that is uh, specified in those survey questionnaires you have to explain if necessary item by item so that they will necessarily uh, they will understand exactly what you want to gather establish a trustworthy and credible relationship with participants where there are any costs involved in answering your questions or providing you with information you should be responsible for meeting these costs next is you have to assure participants that they will be able to comment on report before it's made public assure participants that they will uh, get copy of the final report when it is ready now this is uh, this is uh these are the factors influencing research now the conduct and finding of research tools procedures and analysis is affected by these particular factors number one we have public interest and bias and so that's the reason why during election time uh, there are a lot of surveys that comes out of which there are different uh, number ones uh, political uh, uh, political figure number one is number one and political number uh, political figure number two is also number one because those kind of research that displays um, a specific political numbers are not in any manner a form of research but a mere propaganda material and tool although there are uh, results of surveys that are true and correct but there are also surveys that are false and fake uh, let's say for example um, there are uh, surveys that shows uh, one particular candidate in in the philippines wherein uh, they have a very high uh, rating but in the end after the election they lost and so that should be that should not be the case in in matters of research we also have what they call as a company interest and biases especially when uh, a company is conducting a specific research and then it results in some kind of a bias in favor of the company because you no know, they they want that uh, their company would appear nice to the public government rules and regulation will also affect research such as data privacy laws and other pertaining rules and regulations researchers own biases and interests of course uh, your own interests will also affect the result of the research and so that's the reason why as much as possible you prevent all of these kinds of influencing factors and of course peer pressures thank you for watching and i hope that you learned something see you in the next video